hey everyone welcome to my uh talk today uh so today we're going to um give a presentation about uh cross chain um other protocol and and the idea is to kind of like give briefly uh introduction on uh what other is as a protocol um as a com community on protocol and also uh, how does the protocol work in terms of like cross-chain functionality and, and what kind of uh, interesting things uh, this cross-chain um, uh, ability brings and, and how it, it actually empowers the whole uh, ecosystem and also kind of like how Chainlink plays plays in role, what we are uh, as a community constantly building. Um, yeah, so those who probably you all know, uh, Many you might, and many you might be uh, newcomers commerce into the uh, Web3 space. So Aave is a decentralized uh, liquidity protocol uh, that is currently the biggest one uh, in decentralized finance. And what it means is that uh, as a liquidity protocol, you can uh, de de deposit and supply funds into the protocol and then draw liquidity against your funds that are being there as a collateral. And it's a way to create a, uh, a yield market uh, on chain that then uh, other developers can actually build different kinds of uh, protocols and products on top. And, and that's how the Aave liquidity itself comes to the protocol. So Aave is very developer friendly uh, protocol. And because of the reason that we have been, uh, we, we've been building a uh, developer friendly protocol, uh, it has grown quite substantially over uh, this year and and last year, and currently uh, it's the biggest DeFi protocol out there and, and quite uh, substantially important uh, Web three uh, kind of like a uh, component piece of component uh, in this space. And uh, recently we have uh, included also uh, not just uh, the Ethereum market that we have where. Uh, the, the, the protocol has been deployed on Ethereum, but also in other markets, uh, such as uh, now as first is the Polygon. And, and we'll during this talk kind of like assess uh, how do you evolve something uh, that has been um, uh, deployed in, in one particular uh, blockchain and governed there, and how do you actually can expand your community across multiple networks and, and how does the, the, the other community solve uh, these uh, challenges. Uh, so essentially, how the protocol works is that uh, you supply assets into 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 the protocol, and then as you supply and and generate uh, yield, uh, that particular deposit becomes uh, essentially also a form of a collateral, which allows you to draw other kind of assets from the. Uh, protocol as well. And you can, of course, delegate that uh, kind of like a uh, drawing power to someone else. So someone else can actually draw behalf of you and create this, this kind of like a trust network as well uh, with this uh, credit delegation feature, uh, which is something that we are currently experimenting and uh, hoping that more developers get interested in that feature and, and building uh, more trust-based uh, DeFi application, applications on top of this uh, feature. And also there is a component of uh, liquidators also as, as market participants in the protocol who are, um, the liquidator network is, is decentralized, um, the same as the supplier participants and the, the borrowers as well, uh, which means that uh, liquidators are uh, running autonomously and uh, competing to liquidate unhealthy uh, collateral positions within the protocol uh, and, and that way keeping the protocol uh, healthy, and this has been very resi resilient uh, way to um, keep collateralization and, and position management across DeFi, especially when assets are volatile. We've seen the the Black Thursday a year ago, and now uh, during last uh, uh, May when the asset prices uh, decreased substantially, which caused a lot of liquidations, and uh, uh, the other protocol has been very resilient for. Uh, towards that, so it's it's interesting to see mainly because there's so much liquidity and because of automated market makers and flash loans that kept kept the DeFi protocols um, solvent during uh, fluctuations. So this is the 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 the, the base uh, concept, and of course 
uh, most important part, especially to me, is that uh, other protocol is owned by uh, the community and its users. So what it, this means is that uh, the team has originally deployed the protocol and, and, and built it. But now anyone, any part of the world can actually contribute and do contribute on continuing building the protocol and improving it. And at the same time, uh, when you have something, some kind of a changes, whether it's uh, new builds or new features, all of this uh, or risk parameter changes, all of this has to go through a decentralized governance, meaning that the uh, uh, original team or any other development team can't arbitrarily change the the protocol and it has to go to the governance process where the token holders come together and, and vote on matters that are important to them, uh, either for or against. And of course, uh, what's fascinating is that this decision-making power can be also delegated either uh, the proposition power to put proposals on chain or uh, voting power to other participants. And we've seen um, for the past uh, year that a lot of universities have become very active in DeFi governance. And it's fascinating to see this, uh, this kind of movement where um, uh, stakeholders are delegating their proposition power to protocol politicians, universities, and other uh, entities. And this is kind of a very, very good uh, direction. And of course, the other protocol has so-called safety module where you can deposit uh, the Aave tokens and then against incentives, you are pretty much backstopping the potential risk of the protocol, such as if there's some sort of a failed liquidation um, uh, or some sort of smart contract vulnerability. The protocol itself has been audited by five different auditors uh, and formally verified. Um, so it's it's been working for quite a long time. But in case there is something, there is this safety module as a backstop mechanism. So this is how essentially the the the, the whole protocol governance and and the the backstopping uh, works. And the Aave um, version two, which was uh, deployed last year December, um, the market itself has been growing very much as the whole DeFi uh, ecosystem. So we see. Uh, where we are at the, the gross uh, value locked in the protocol. This means how much of the value of those deposits are and supplying is in the in the smart contracts and, and what is the amount of, of borrowing from the protocol against those collaterals, collateral assets uh, is, is happening. And, and especially for the past uh, um, year, DeFi has grown substantially and, and Aave, of course, has been growing, growing uh, as, as DeFi is growing, but also because of the fact that the, the, the protocol has wide range of different assets that are listed, uh, but compared to other uh, protocols, uh, the asset parameters are very conservative. So uh, there is specifically the, the, the governance votes on, on how much you can actually draw liquidity against which kind of an asset, depending on their uh, risk uh, profiles. So that's the kind of like a key, uh, key metrics on the, the uh, main market. And we deployed uh, with the community uh, in a market in Polygon. And Polygon essentially is a uh, uh, proof of stake uh, sidechain, which has EVM, which is a virtual machine, kind of mimics the same functionality what Ethereum itself has. Uh, meaning that you can uh, run the same smart contracts there, uh, pretty much with the same configurations, but just different network settings. And uh, that has those the, the easy easiness of deploying to uh, Polygon has been kind of like also a driver, not just for Aave, but the whole uh, DeFi community to experiment there and try try kind of like a uh, uh, grow their user base in Polygon network. And Polygon is interesting because of the proof of stake, the transaction costs are fractional compared to what we have on Ethereum main network. And I think the takeaway about uh, that being a cross-chain protocol is that by tapping out different kinds of communities, especially in Polygon where the transaction fees are low, you reach out to a wider uh, audience and we, have in the protocol currently 72,000 or so um, um, 
active users and in the polygon market over 140,000. So this is just showcases like the amount of users when the transaction fees are lower. And interestingly, uh, more liquidity is in the layer one. So it's kind of like a way to create more inclusiveness as well when you deploy uh, to another network where you have less transaction fees. And this is kind of like a um, been very good uh, approach for Aave to be cross-chain and, and has also urged other protocols to do uh, the same. And we can compare, for example, the numbers I showed previously on the layer one and layer two. Uh, but the key component is that deposit amounts are actually smaller compared to what we have in layer one, but way more users. And this, this is also interesting because uh, in the future, when you govern the market, you somehow need to include those smaller uh, kind of like a transactioning sizes and users that are uh, participating in governance also be able to vote on on the uh, polygon market with low gas fees. And um, we have been researching quite a lot on the fact like where uh, as a cross-chain uh, protocol, where the community would like to move next to and pretty much the sentiments what uh, we have been reading is that um, there's sort of interest in a uh, few of different kinds of um, chains for example there is avalanche that actually has very fascinating consensus mechanism but it's evm compatible there is proof of stake like polygon and uh, other examples is optimism which is uh, l2 which means that you're using the um uh, kind of like Ethereum security, but you're transactioning uh, on a separate layer and then rolling up the transactions back to the um, uh, main uh, network and using that security where you lower transaction fees. Whereas if you go back and look at the, the Avalanche, for example, it's a completely uh, separate chain with its own kind of fundamentals. Uh, and then we have, uh, example, Arbitrum, which is works similarly as, as uh, uh, optimistic rollups, but it has EVM, which is means that it's easier to deploy there from technical perspective. And there's of course other solutions, um, side chains such as Solana Neon and uh, Neon and and the ability to have uh, EVM there as well. And I, I guess like mo mo most importantly, what it boils down in terms of like being cross chain protocol is that. Security is very important. And when you have to build things from scratch, that means that you um, kind of like need to rethink on the security aspect of the protocol itself and how that will affect uh, the deployments. Because building something like Aave protocol is very uh, cost heavy, uh, not because of the reason that it takes time to develop the actual code base, but because uh, you have to put a lot of effort in the due diligence. And even compatibility, compatible chains are that's what that, that's the reason uh they're easier to deploy uh for for the Aave protocol and of course cross-chain governance so that's uh important so uh if you, if there is a polygon market how the um governance can be uh how those markets can be governed uh with a um way where you participate as a as a token holder and governance member and this is something we've been researching and 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 finding solutions on how we um, will be able to actually create a mechanism of governance where you can vote on the layer one on decisions on polygon market or let's say Arbitrum or Avalanche. And, and then we propagate those results into those particular markets we are governance bridging. This is something we're going to release in, in soon and discuss a bit more once we understand more about uh, the rest of the structure that's what we are doing in the cross-chain uh, governance. Um, yeah, of course, other things are the gas costs. I mean, voting is still too expensive. And, and this is something where we're looking into optimistic voting, whereas voting is uh, off-chain, but then someone takes the vote and puts, puts that actual result on-chain, uh, essentially. That's something we're looking kind of like to make the governance more inclusive. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, listening and I want to thank Nicolo from the Ave team as well on helping the slides and I hope you all have a very good time during this uh, conference and um, 
there's a lot of interesting talks going on. Thank you so much.